Let's dig deeper into some of your recent work at SESP, uh, which I, I found to be very interesting as well and insightful. Um, you've put out uh, challenges for US competitiveness report, I think uh, now a couple of years ago. Uh, a more recent report on mid-decade opportunities, uh, again, for the, uh, you know that vision for competitiveness report. Uh, talk to us about those reports, right? And yeah. talk to us yeah. about what are some of the core recommendations uh, coming out of those reports for the US um, that that uh, that you think are critical in this next sort of six five to six year time frame, yeah. uh, given um, that twenty five to thirty two thousand twenty five to thirty okay. piece is a critical determining point for how this competition will play out. No, thank you for that question. So first of all, let me talk a little bit of background about both documents. The first one is called Mid Decade Challenges to um, you, uh, uh, National Competitiveness, and the second one is Vision for Competitiveness. When we when we produced the first one in October of 2022, we wanted to produce a document that outlines the challenges and opportunities you have. I know it sounds cliche of the steps you need to undertake between 2022 and 25 to be better positioned for this 2025, 2030, you know, maximum dangerous, uh, you know, period of our lifetime that John McMaster calls it. And so from 2022 to 2023, we produced that report. And we opened the report actually with a chapter that says, what if China wins? And so we depict a world in which you and I can easily wake up in 2025 in which China has won the technology competition. Yeah. And I can walk you through that scenario. It's not a sci-fi scenario, yeah. um, but it's a really, if you, if you allowed the trends from 2022 continue in the technology space, you could easily foresee an environment in which you wake up and you have a world in which the digital infrastructure globally is owned by Chinese. Most of the online platforms are owned by Chinese and most of your data one way or another goes through the CCP servers back in Beijing, right? Yeah. Um, so we wanted to really pro project forward that potential scenario that all of us could face if we allow that competition to go unaddressed on our challenge, right? Yeah. And so that was the purpose of that document. The it's document, like, I, I would say it's almost like, I don't know if you see the parallels. Uh, it's almost like what Eric was saying back in 2018, et cetera, that in that 2018, 19 timeframe, that listen, our lead against China is really, really slim. Yeah. And yeah. Three exactly. down the line, yeah. that lead will not be there. Right. And, um, and no, absolutely right. And the other thing I would just, I would say is people think that there's an end uh, point to the technology competition. I would argue that it's not yeah. because technology evolves almost every day, every second. You always have to be dynamic when it comes to this competition. So you always have to, uh, always have to go faster as, as you know, Eric says, and you always have to outmaneuver and outpace your competitor, right? Otherwise, this is how private sector operates, right? If you see what the private sector uh, or the release of these models that has happened in the last two plus years is almost every month or two, you have a release of a better, powerful model because every company is trying to stay ahead. Yeah. No, I this call it waves, Elisa. I call it waves. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great one, that, yeah. You know, there are waves. Yeah. You might have ridden the first wave really well and, you know, you were the great surfer. Exactly. You know, wrote exactly. the first wave really well, but there's another one coming. Exactly. You, know, you don't have your eye on that one. Um, you lose, yeah. One is, is gone now, right? That's and a great point. That yeah. Matters, yeah. And, and we said this thing in the first report when people asked us, especially when they were asking Eric, um, is China or U.S. ahead? He would say, like, U United States is ahead, but China is catching up fast. And you can see it, you know. Imagine, yeah. uh, you can see, like, whether it's 18 months, 12 months, or six months. Yeah. But you always want to be ahead, but you also do, you don't want to stop. Because yeah. These two documents were now broader than AI, right? I mean, these yes. are now, yeah. so, unlike the AI commission work, yeah. this is now much broader. So talk to us about yeah. what that scope looks like for competitiveness. Yeah, so oh. if you look back at the, the AI commission's report, um, Chapter 16, really, uh, which probably a lot of people didn't pay attention, but the way we designed Chapter 16 was really in response to Eric's question is, what is the United States list of technologies that we have to stay ahead? Yeah. You know, um, in Chapter 16, already starts talking about what are the list, what are the list of technologies, right? It's not just AI because AI is one of the technologies, but AI is also going to fundamentally drive forward other technologies. Think about yeah. biotech, quantum and everything else. Uh and so what we did with SCSP the first year is we did a net assessment. What are the technologies that are critical for the future of nations? You know, technologies that are general purpose technologies, dual purpose technologies that can drive fundamental change in terms of your health, 
in terms of your economy, your national security, military oh. capabilities, right? So we came up with a list of six technologies, right? And so we continue to always talk about those six technologies because they're all intertwined. They all have hardware, software, data associated with them, but also they are critically important for the future of everything we're going to do. And what and are those so, six? Uh, uh, so AI, obviously, and next generation AI models, which I think in the next couple of years, we should be serious about how we talk about artificial general intelligence. Obviously, semiconductors with everything that's going on right now, all the investments our government is making and other governments around the world. What is the next generation of semiconductors? Uh, you know, once we reach the end of the Moore's law. Um, so that's two. So, uh, third is uh, advanced uh, communication. So we're talking about 5G today, but people are already working on 6G. And, you know, then you put on top of that satellite connectivity, which is also emerging as a, as a serious actor in the United States with a Starlink deployment and other deployments around the world. China is also not behind in the space. So those are three that you have to fundamentally get it right. And then the next three are the future of co compute power, which includes quantum. As you know, quantum has always been like seven to 10 years away. But I think with the advancement of AI, that, that window will be shortened. And you have amazing companies now that are working in this space, both here and in India, as you know. Um, the, the fifth uh, technology that we place a lot of uh, emphasis is the future of energy. And here, whether you're, not, whether you're talking about the battery, whether you're talking about the fusion of all the elements of energy, which is now, as we talked earlier, getting a lot of attention. Uh, you saw the news now, companies purchasing nuclear power plants, Re re revitalizing power plants, uh, a lot of emphasis being on fusion. We have some serious fusion companies now in the United States. We as SESP, we have a fusion commission uh, that we have launched just because we believe, you know, even fusion that looked distant future many, many years ago, now uh, we have se some, some serious companies that, are, uh, that have serious milestones ahead of them to produce fusion energy, right? And so energy is really critical. And then, and then the sixth technology uh, is biotech. I mean, again, with the advancement of AI, um, biotech now really is on a critical point. 